Well, good morning, good folk. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and welcome back. I'm out of town, but before I return to New Jersey slash Philadelphia, we have time to go through, peruse through, Columbia, uh, Pennsylvania, and the wonderful Toll Booth Antiques. Now, let's go inside. Last time we were here, we spied... I don't know why I always say we. Well, it, it is we. It's you and me. We spied a uh, early Victorian, mid-19th century, uh, red painted blanket chest. And I had a, f I flipped over it. I wonder if anyone came and got it. Let's go see if it's still here. That was two months ago. Solid quarter sawn oak, raised panel, construction, high quality, low price. $375. Now that's the understatement of the year. <clears throat> Truth be told on that price tag. $375. <laughs> oh my word. 30 years ago, this would have been a $1,500 desk and you know it. Roll top with the, with the tambour intact and not falling apart. Look at the handles, raised oak at the knee hole, as well as on the sides. <sighs> I have to remind myself, I live in a tiny 1925 bungalow. I can't have it. I can't have it. This is late Victorian as well. $65 on that old corner chair in bamboo that's got artificial grain paint on it. You see this here? Is it focusing? Oh my gosh. Bunch of old floor models. The news that those things broadcast. Let's see, there's a Philco. There's a Spartan. And this one is a, uh, is this a Philco as well? Or a General Electric? That's a Philco as well. Well, you know I love old radios. Okay, so I know I've been here before and it was just a month ago. So I'll try to film things I didn't film the first time. Like this 50s TV lamp at $150 with its original shade. And it's actually sitting on a 50s era TV. Yeah. This is Toll Booth Antiques in Columbia, Pennsylvania. And when I was here in August, it was sweltering. You know, you can't really heat or cool these old buildings, so it feels good now because it's in November. There's a little Victor in Quarter Sawn Oak as well. A small model, which was very common, that particular one. Now, what else can we look at we haven't seen before? Look at this beautiful corner cupboard here made of... Uh, looks like a combination of cherry and mahogany. The drawer fronts are mahogany. I'll have to get closer to it. And then the secondary wood here appears to be cherry. This would be the cherry and this is the mahogany. Are you picking up the wavy glass? That's probably 1830s, 40s. It's never been painted. It looks like an original old finish. That's just absolutely beautiful. And it's $1,800. I don't think this was here the last time. Look at the panel doors. Wow. There's another stunning one over there. That's only 1,100. All right, you brown furniture lovers, come on now. Rent, rent yourself a U-Haul and come on over here to PA. We've got it. We've got it. And you come and get it. Mm-hmm. 
What do you want to see? <clears throat> I should be doing this live so you can, well, you know, that would be a mess because I can't see the comments, but you could tell me, zoom in on this, zoom in on that. I know I've shown you all these oil lamps before. I'm so much more attracted to amber than I used to be. That one's beautiful and could be converted without damaging it to an electric lamp. And that would be beautiful in the autumn season. Looks like it's hand cut there. I might have to think about that to uh, put an electric light bulb on the top. Again, it won't damage it. it could always be converted back to oil again if you wanted to do that. Look at this great big wash bowl here in blue is it flow blue eh, a little bit I see a little flow I don't know $125 hmm there's another Victrola and let's go this way Some primitives and things in here. Uh, it's nice and quiet. There's no music. There's probably about two people here. They just opened at 10 a.m. Look at the way they built sort of a false wall back here out of old barn boards and windows. I'm going to do something similar to that in my basement rather than actually frame it out. I'm going to use old found objects, old doors, old windows and things and sort of frame out certain areas. I don't have a lot of space, but I can be creative with the space that I've got. I don't often stop and take a look at the old uh, primitive type things, baskets and uh, country pieces of furniture, but I appreciate it. Well, for the folks that have, been, uh, that have been following my 1925 bungalow restoration, I'm taking the kitchen back to the 1930s, but I'm fine with a kitchen that has been remodeled over the years. I'm okay with a kitchen that's got a little bit of the 20s, a little bit of the 30s, and maybe a little bit of the 40s, actually. You know, a nice lived-in kind of a kitchen. That has evolved over the years. So... My primary colors are cream and green. I don't want to go over the top cream and green. I want to introduce some other colors. And it was not uncommon to have red in kitchens also with the cream and green. And people have been telling me to paint my back door red. I'm really thinking about it. Now, red is not a color that I normally gravitate to. And this is probably a 40s table right here with the hairpin uh, legs underneath, as you can see, the, mold, the tubular legs. But boy, what a stunning red enamel top on that and the leaves that pull out. There's another small work table here in cracked ice, which I guess you can see. Now, this table right here is $90, no, $70. And this table here, I think, is $90. So no chairs, but meh, big deal. You know, I'm still letting it marinate. Uh... Yeah, what do you think about a kitchen that really feels as though a family has lived in that house for years and it's a mixture of 20s, 30s, 40s? You know, that way I'm not locked into one era. I'm thinking about it. What do you guys think? I am not thinking about this. I'm taking these with me. Art Deco salt and pepper shakers, black pearlescent um, luster and uh, yellow. I don't know why that was so difficult for me to get that out, but they're coming home with me. All right, let's think more about this kitchen combination. I think cream and green and red, I think it would just be wonderful, and it's historically accurate. Mm -hmm. I hope whatever you've got to do is something
Nothing that can be done by two For I'd really like to stay It's a lovely day today And whatever you've got to do I'd be so happy to be doing it with you But if you've got something that must be done And it can only be done by one There is nothing more to say Except it's a lovely day for saying It's a lovely day That was Mindy Carson singing It's a Lovely Day Today, and I might add sounding as though she really meant it. I did mean it, Bill.
Well, going home with me today is this classic 1930s Art Deco side table. It's hard for me to find small pieces of really classic deco furniture made in America, modern furniture as it was called at that time, uh, or modern. Uh, mixed veneers on the top, mahogany and book, march, book matched uh, walnut. Um, it's going to need work, as you can see, but ebonized here on the sides. And look at this wonderful deco effect here. Kind of the reverse of a skyscraper. The original finish is going to be able to be preserved on it. And can you see a deco radio sitting on this with a blue mirrored glass, a blue circular mirror behind it? Yeah, that's a nice end table. Classic 30s style. And I paid very little for it. Very little for it. The salt and pepper shakers are in that bag. And what about that refrigerator? Let's talk about that later. I gotta go put this in the truck.